Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Replay Mega Man X. In the last part, we start off the game, took care of our first couple of Mavericks, and now we're heading after Flame Mammoth. Who we're heading after because of the weakness chain that's kind of going on. Uh, you might remember since we started with Chill Penguin, uh, I said the next weakness after that would be to head after Spark Mandrel, but I went after Storm Eagle instead. Uh, Flame Mammoth at this point is mostly just me taking care of l a loose end because uh, Storm Tornado is strong against Flame Mammoth, whereas Flame Mammoth's weapon is strong against Chill Penguin. Either way, first off, we want to head on up to where these blocks we can destroy are, because up here is our first item for Flame Mammoth Stage of the Three, and it's a Dr. Light Capsule. This capsule contains a part, which will increase the capabilities of your X-Buster. You can use it to fire all types of weapons. And what he means by that is not only do, does our main charged X-Buster now reach a third pink level, which can do some pretty decent damage, uh, we also can now charge special weapons. Uh, special weapon chargers range in use from great to absolutely useless, and overall, we'll just see what we can when we get through them. Either way, uh, we actually want to dash along this frozen lava here on the floor to get the heart tank for the stage and now our next goal is to actually get the sub tank that's also in this stage because all three items are sent around this area. Now the thing is this place is supposed to be the fire level. Notice the lack of any fire in fact it all looks to be frozen. That is due to a small system that X1 incorporates in three of its stages. If you destroy a certain maverick and then go to another stage, a uh, specific stage of that, uh, this the stage itself will be affected by the Maverick destroyed. If you head to Flame Mammoth first, this place is all on fire and instant kill lava. I no, actually know that I don't think the lava is instant kill. I think the fireballs that jump out of it are, and just a lot more hot gimmicks. Whereas here, uh, it's completely frozen. That's because since I went to Chill Penguin and killed him first, this place is now entirely frozen over. Storm Eagle stage will also affect a certain one, as will Launch Octopuses when we get to that. Uh, it's a, one of the few games in the series that really uses this system. X6's Nightmare System was something similar to it, but it wasn't the exact same. Also, uh, Storm Tornado, as I mentioned last part, is absolutely absurd at destroying enemies, seriously. Uh, and we're actually coming up on the boss himself, because Flame Mammoth Stage, uh, especially with it frozen, is very easy. Uh, short, too, all things considered. Either way, uh, Flame Mammoth is a boss that took me some time to figure out exactly what was going on with when I was playing the game as a younger kid. Uh, he likes to jump all over the place, but the main gimmick with this fight is that you're on a conveyor belt, and obviously, when he jumps, you get stunned a little bit. However, when I was a kid, I noticed the conveyor belt was switching directions like it just did, but I couldn't quite detect what was doing it. What's causing that is his little roars like that. Uh, other things he can do, he can shoot out oil from his trunk and then light it on fire with his little own buster, but he didn't get much of a chance to do that here at all, really. In fact, that was one of the easiest fights I've ever had with the guy. Uh, Flame Mammoth also is one of two bosses that has a particular gimmick with them, in that if you hit them with three shots of another weapon from later on, uh, his pattern will change, but I'll talk about more, I'll talk more about that when we get that weapon. For right now, though, we do get fire, uh, Flame Mammoth's Fire Wave, which is plain and simple. It's a flamethrower. Uh, do not let that thing's appearance deceive you, though. It might be short range, but the very tip of it can do a lot of damage really quickly. Uh, I only tend to use it in one of a few instances, but it's overall more useful than you'd expect. Now, at this point, we need to actually head back to Chill Penguin stage, because you might remember around the area where... There, we got this little right armor, there was a branching path. You could either go up or down. I went down in the footage earlier, so now we want to jump up here now that we have Fire Wave, and destroy that to get the stage's heart tank. I think off the top of my head, that's the only heart tank with this route you need to backtrack for. Uh, cause the, the, the route I'm using is one that a lot of people use, in that it minimizes backtracking, especially if you do stuff along the way. With that said, though, time for our next boss fight, uh, next stage, rather, Spark Mandrills, which is the stage that Storm Eagles affects. Also, that name used to make me laugh as a kid before I realized it was a primate. Uh, primate. Either way, those chunks on the ground are chunks of Storm Eagles' own ship from the end of his stage. 
since we destroyed his I uh, went through uh, Storm Eagle stage first, rather. This stage's gimmick changes from being electric balls all over the place, like on the floors right here, to being kind of a darkness stage. Uh, the power's out, enemies are all over the place, uh, and lights are going on and off. I think lights partially go on and off anyway, but I forget, honestly. Uh, the last time I did Storm Eagle after Spark Mandrill was... Uh, ooh, actually... 2012-ish? Either way, uh, Spark Mandrill does have a mini-boss here in the Thunder Slimer. Uh, he misses an attack as well due to the fact we took out Storm Eagle first. Uh, what he misses out on is a little lightning bolt attack that comes out of that thing coming out of the bottom of the bubble. Uh, Storm Tornado, again, really good for this. Uh, overall, it's actually a very easy mini-boss with Storm Tornado if you take Storm Eagle out first. Which, mind you, if you have Storm Tornado, you did that anyway. Though, knowing the password system, there's probably some really weird password you can enter that will cause you to have Storm Tornado, but Storm Eagle is probably still alive. I don't know. It, password systems always have some sort of weird, busted things like that you can make up along the way. I think there is a password that can give you basically every item before uh, the first stage is beaten, so... Either way, the, the heart tank is here, and you're supposed to wait until you get Boomer Kawanger's ability to be able to get this, but if you're good with your wall jumps, you can just dash wall jump up to there and get it uh, nice and early. Spark Mandrel stage is one I used to have a lot of issues with because these turtle enemies have a bit too much health if you're just trying to mega bust them, but after I discovered the wonder that is Storm Tornado's obscene damage output, uh, this place really just became kind of a joke. Which, I'm trying to think. I don't think another Mega Man X game had a weapon as busted as the Storm Tornado, except for the remake, for obvious reasons. Either way, time for Spark Mandrel, who's weak against the shotgun ice, and without it, he is potentially one of the most annoying Mavericks in the game. Uh, cause he likes to do a lot of very quick moves. He can climb on the ceiling, do a very quick dash punch at you, and a very quick little ground pound attack where he causes lightning bolts to spread across the area. Uh, with his weakness though, he is potentially the easiest Maverick in the game, because that's basically the most he can do against you right there. Which, mind you, I, I think that is partially how the weakness system in Mega Man games should work. If you have the weakness, it should make the boss severely easier, on, as opposed to uh, some of the later X games, where it more or less just does a little more damage and resets their pattern. But uh, uh, poor Spark Mandrel doesn't get much of a chance to do anything. But for beating him, we do get a fairly useful ability. I don't use it too much, but it is potentially lethal. Electric Spark. Very high-rapid-firing electric attack that if it hits a wall or enemy will split off in two directions, up and down. Uh, basically, it'll go vertical, split vertically, there you go. With him down, it's time for our next Maverick, though, and one of my favorite stages in the game, actually. It's time for Armored Armadillo. Now, this stage is one we have to revisit for something later on, so it is potentially a good idea to ignore one item in it until then. Uh, but for right now, uh, it does have a very unique gimmick in that we have these little minecart things, and your momentum does actually carry with you as long as you don't have the damn bat bonds and have your momentum get all screwed up. Now, the first item in this stage occurs very early on. We got these molroids, or whatever they're called early on, and we want to actually kill them with fire wave because we don't want them messing up anything in the future. And then we want to head where that one started because there is our sub tank. And you're going to notice I pause here for a second. That's because I'm checking for something. Uh, I had a glitch once occur with that specific sub tank. I collected it and it showed up in my inventory and everything, but it already had a little bit of energy in it. It wouldn't get any extra energy added to it, and I couldn't select it from the menu, so I had a weirdly glitched sub-tank. I always check to make sure it doesn't happen, because uh, knowing my luck, it probably will happen again at some point. That was a weird playthrough, too. It prevented me from getting the bonus item, too, which I think was the thing that really pissed me off about that particular run. Uh, really, though, this stage uh, is one of my favorites, mostly just through the sense of speed it has going on through it because you really feel powerful riding on top of those things. Also, get Fire Wave out again and roast this thing to death with the tip of it because you need it to get destroyed really quickly. 
Why? Because a short distance after where I destroyed it is the heart tank. And you cannot reach this wall if you didn't destroy it quickly enough. Uh, it is much more, it is very possible to destroy it much more quickly than what I did there, but uh, be careful either way. Also, that specific sound effect was a sub tank getting filled all the way. Uh, I don't end up using sub tanks too much until the end game levels, but they're there. Also, jump to find an extra energy pellet that, uh, let's just say, might be important for later on. Either way, time for Armored Armadillo, who, again, without his weakness, is actually fairly annoying because he can block a lot of your attacks. Uh, he helps specifically put his arms in front of him to do so. What he likes to do as his first move is always this little bounce around the room attack where he just kind of bounces around at geometric angles. Uh, fairly easy to predict, and beyond that, the only other attack I can recall him having is the one he does after you shock him and cause him to lose his armor. Once you do that, he is now completely open to attack, and his only real attack otherwise is this little head laser thing. Needless to say, as you can see, once you get him into a weakness chain, he does not stand much of a chance at all. Poor guy. Uh, without his armor, though, with his armor, though, he is a very annoying boss. And overall, I'd say, as much as I love the stage itself, Armored Armadillo's weapon is probably my least favorite in the game on the whole. We get Rolling Shield from him, which more or less is what it sounds like. It's a little shield you shoot in front of you, and it goes along a certain path bouncing off walls. Uh, its charge attack is potentially the most useless as well, at least here in the original. It more or less just gives you a one-shot shield. That, that, that's it. And it's only real use to me is against the two bosses in the game that are weak against it. The first of which is Launch Octopus here. Which, as a kid, used to be my least favorite stage in the game. Also, if I recall, Launch Octopus is one of the few bosses in the series that has two names, aside from everything from X5. Uh, because in X5 itself, actually, he is referred to by Squid Adler as Launch Octopardo. I think you need to be talking to him as X for that. Either way, this was my least favorite stage in the game as a child because it was the water level, and I hated water levels as a kid. Whereas nowadays, whenever I'm playing a Mega Man game and I see a water level, I smile with glee because of water physics. However, uh, there is still one thing I don't like about the stage, the mini-bosses. There are a lot of them in this stage. Uh, if you're going for everything, you have to fight four of them. Two of these fishes and two of another thing. The first fish here isn't too bad at all, honestly, because... Uh, Staying away from him isn't too hard to do unless you dash into him intentionally like I do. And the most he does is just mess around with your physics. The second one we see later on... not so much. I do believe the fastest way to take care of them though might be to actually stand inside of their hitbox and just spam fire the storm tornado. The second one's much more annoying because... Uh, well, that. Uh, he has spikes around him, meaning you need to be a lot more on your feet. Uh, thankfully, uh... I died right here, so there's not much pain in me losing there. Uh, one thing you can do with these fishes, though, you see me do with both of them, is that you can destroy the little spotlight that's on their forehead. Uh, that prevents them from having a little spotlight attack. I, I forget exactly how it works. I think if you touch the spotlight itself, it damages you, but uh, I forget. It's been a while since I've seen them use it. And with that, we now enter the second half of the stage, which now has a new gimmick. Uh, these little water tornadoes that you can jump through. We want to reach this little whale submarine and use storm tornado on it to destroy it quickly. Because this is what allows us to get the only item in the stage. Also, I did not notice for years that that thing's sprite changed when it was on the ground. And here we got another mini boss, which is already dead. Uh, that little eel mini boss, I don't remember the name of it because it's not very important to me, is very killable with Storm Tornado. You see why I say this thing's broken? Honestly, I'm not sure what I prefer though when it comes to the Mega Man X stages because having just the heart tank in the stage makes it feel relatively unimportant and empty. However, at the same time, having as many items as say like X5 or 6 could have per stage and the amount of backtracking you'd have to do for it, it didn't feel as good. Also, it, for some reason they make you fight two of these things. I don't quite understand why. Uh, as a kid, I didn't know about the one down below, so I thought it was just this one. I, for some reason, it makes me feel like you're. So, if you, uh, it was. Eh. For some reason, it makes me feel as if the one that you destroy at the bottom should prevent the one at the top from showing up. Either way, time for Launch Octopus, who, even with his weakness, is probably still the hardest Maverick in the game. Uh, more accurately, 
uh, he is the hardest Maverick in the game with his weakness still. Because he does a lot. Uh, he likes to jump all over the place, firing two kinds of torpedoes, either these little fish that home onto you a little bit more, or actual homing torpedoes. He can cause this little tornado effect you see there, in which he's completely invincible during. And that's about it for his attacks, but he can have so much happen at once that it's very easy to get hit in this boss fight. In fact, uh, I know from people who have attempted to do Buster-only perfect runs of this game that this guy is the hardest fight in the game. I can see why. Uh, honestly though, at least rolling di uh, shield does enough damage to him that it's notable. But with or without this guy's weakness, he's always very annoying. I had to use a sub tank for him, which I actually haven't had to do in a couple of years. But honestly, since it's it, it since it's launch octopus, I don't feel particularly bad about doing that. Also, since you've been seeing me do it the entire game, basically, uh, X, uh, the X series introduced something that I think Mega Man Seven would later do as well, in that you can press L one uh, L R R rather, not L one R one. Uh, that's X collection, Kyle, to switch between your weapons without having to go to the pause screen. Something I very much appreciate. And for beating Launch Octopus, we get the greatly spelled Horming Torpedo. Ah, that's unintentional. But uh, plain and simple, it, it's Horming Torpedoes. It, what else do you need to know but that? And it's particularly useful against our next Maverick, Boomer Koanger, there on the far right. Uh, Boomer Koanger's name is also the only one that's not completely translated, technically. Uh, because... Kuwanger is basically derived from Kuwagata, which is a stag beetle in Japan, basically. At the same time, though, Boomerang Beetle... Oh, actually, no, that, that does have a nice ring to it. Huh. Either way, Boomer Kuwanger's theme is my absolute favorite song in the X series. I love this song to death. And it's a unique stage in the game, actually, because off the top of my head, it's the only one that's, like, mostly vertically structured. Uh, this upcoming horizontal section aside, everything in the stage is vertical. And it's weird to see that for some reason in this series to me. This, as a kid, was probably the hardest stage in the game to me because I couldn't quite get behind the vertical structure of it for some reason. Not like I couldn't figure it out, but one particular section later on in the stage just tore me apart. And it's right here. This elevator section is very lethal, because I think everything we see that's a spike is still instant kill, as usual for Mega Man. Uh, there is a way you can avoid the platforms, aside from just avoiding them, obviously, and that's if you let the little purple enemies hit you, uh, when you're right below one of the platforms, your invincibility frames will make you clip right through the platform. It'll look like you're about to get crushed for a second, but you, you'll clip through it immediately, basically. Uh, this is potentially overall the most annoying section of the stage for me now, because there's a lot of weird jumps you have to make involving the wall or the platforms. As usual though, Storm Tornado helps a lot with getting rid of enemies since its hitbox is bigger than most of the other weapons as well. And I really like the way this stage actually looks on the outside. For some reason that red looks real nice. Either way, we're coming up on the only item in this stage, and it is a heart tank. They want you to wait until you have Boomer Kowanger's own weapon to get it. However, you can charge up the shotgun ice to make this little ice sled appear that actually looks like Chill Penguin himself, if you look at it carefully, and slide along it. I have some trouble with this for a few minutes, because this platform is being extraordinarily annoying. It's screw off. Either way, once you actually get it to work properly, you get on the platform, dash, jump off of it, go to the left, and get the heart tank. At this point, there is only, I think, one heart tank left in the game to get, and it's in the last stage. Uh, in terms of what a lot of the charge shots are for the weapons, it's usually just a bigger version of it, like the charged storm tornado is a storm tornado that goes vertically on top of you. Uh, charged fire wave is an automatically moving wave forward of fire. Shotgun ice is the sled. Uh, homing torpedo, I think, sends out a bunch of them at once. Uh, electric spark, I actually, no, I think electric spark sends out a wall of spark. Uh, and I forget what the other ones do at the moment. Either way, time for Boomer Kawanger, who I actually forget most of the attacks of. Because his weakness uh, tears him apart a little bit. But without his weakness, he is without a doubt the hardest fight in the game because he is extraordinarily agile. He likes to throw that little boomerang around, which is actually a nice little hint towards what his weapon is. He dashes forward a lot. He can throw you towards the ceiling, which I think does a lot of damage. 
and he loves teleporting all over the place, which is one of the reasons he's actually the hardest, because he is extraordinarily hard to hit when he does that a lot. Because uh, I think the moment he starts blinking, he technically is invincible to everything that's not the Horming Torpedo. On the whole, though, without his weakness, he's incredibly frightening. With it, nothing to really worry about. Uh, we also get uh, possibly one of the most referential weapons in the X series uh, from him. We get basically a combination of the Quick Boomerang and Rolling Cutter from Mega Man's 2 and 1, respectively. The Boomerang Cutter. Plain and simple, it's a rapid fire boomerang that go up in an arc or down in an arc if you're jumping and falling while you use it. And it'll collect items along the way if it hits any. Uh, actually, it's a fairly useful weapon in terms of survivability. Uh, but with that, I'm going to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching, and in part 3 we'll be getting our last Maverick down as well as getting 100% of the items, and then heading towards endgame. See you guys then.